Right then, we're going to talk about spooner dwellings. If you don't know what they are, they're um, an old fashioned form of timber frame. Um, so we've got an external leaf of brickwork, internal structural frame of timber. Uh, they do have issues, well known issues, and I just thought I'd go through a wall tie survey on one just to show you the sort of things we find. Um, first of all, bear in mind that they are a cranked tie. So what you've got is a fishtail in the outer leaf and a little vertical crank which should be screwed to the inner leaf. What you tend to find is they're not screwed, they're just hammered in with a clout head, a little galvanised nail, something like that. And the natural leverage which is caused as um, the timber frame shrinks a bit and as the outer leaf is buffeted by the wind, can sometimes loosen that connection. So when you're looking at wall ties in a spooner frame, um, you're looking for that little gap between that vertical bit and the, um, and the stud itself. And you can see that with the boroscope. Now this particular property has got an, um, um, external insulation on it, if you can see, there you are. External insulation makes finding the ties a bit difficult, but I've been able to do that. I had a look, um, and they are moderately corroded at low level. Um, but I've been up in the loft, and I'm going to show you now why it's important to go in the loft in a spooner house. You can't really survey it externally. You must always get in the loft and check for certain things. So we'll go inside now and have a look. Okay, so here we are in the roof of the Spooner house. Um, as you can see, we'll just pan around a little bit, so if it makes you queasy. We've got timber rafters. Can't see the ceiling in this one, but they usually have timber ceiling joists as well. But there's a part metal frame, can you see? Part metal frame, that's providing, you know, there's no purlins as you can see. It's sort of uh, providing restraint. And of course we've got these little crossed steel strap members bracing it all and now if we look at the apex at the gable there's the timber frame we spoke of very flimsy not particularly plumb and literally just pinned together those little noggins there um, all uneven they're virtually pinned together let's just have a closer look yeah we can see them now I've had a metal detector on here and I've had a look and there are wall ties in there and I'll just show you the condition of them now. So there you are, there's the uh, very rusty fishtail tie. You can just about see the upstand. We're looking at it from below, of course. Uh, quite a bit of lamination on that one. Let's just have another look at another. Okay, so there's our second sample. Um, that's the outer leaf. You can see the brickwork there, look. Um, there's the tie entering the outer leaf, and it's very, very badly corroded. You can see there's some lamination. But more worryingly on that sample there, you can see the fishtail. You can see the little dividing of the fishtail. And so that tells me that the embedment in the outer leaf is very poor, so the cavity is potentially wider. Um, we we'll come along here, we can see there's the connection to the inner leaf, the upstand. And again, very rusty. Um, so that's where it's fastened to the timber stud. So that's worrying. Is the cavity wider because the wall's bulging out of the top? Hard to tell because there's external insulation on this one. Um, that could be an indication of some failure, or it may well have been built like that. So, we've got wall tie corrosion in this spooner house, it's a serious matter, you've seen how severe the corrosion is. That's not uncommon. We tend to find it varies because the quality of the ties varied, so you need to look at more than one tie when you're dealing with a spooner house. The other issue is um, lateral restraint, and that's a very common problem with spooner dwellings. If we look at this gable, you'll see what I mean. There is no evidence of any strapping at all fastening this apex to the rafters and I can tell you even though there's a lot of stored articles here there'll be none down at the ceiling either all we've got is that strap there and that strap there and they're not actually connected to the outer leaf they're only there really to support the roof structure so we need to do something about this bear in mind also that when we do remedial work We've got to find all those studs accurately. We've got to use a tie which will self-tap and fix adequately into the timber. I normally recommend Helifix for that. Um, they have to be randomly tension tested. And because it's not a normal situation, you should apply BRE 401 and do a full gambit of tests, not simply 0.5% at random. Not good enough. Um, isolating the old ties may be a, diff uh, a problem as well, particularly when you're... Uh, when like this property we've got external insulation on. As it happens I've been outside, I've scanned it with a metal detector and I can find them and I've poked a boroscope in to check that. So we'll be giving a quotation on this one which will involve a remedial system, a helifix system and also 
um, isolating all the old ties and providing lateral restraint to this gable. Uh, it'll need stiffening as well because really it's very flimsy and we do that by applying sheathing ply heavily screwed to the entire exposed apex area so that we can then fix from that into the adjacent rafters, ceiling joists etc. So I hope you found that interesting. Cheers.